Hello and welcome to the 23rd Cloud Global Congress in the south of France. Joining me now is Haru Busker, CEO and co-founder of Enlighten. And Haru, pleasure speaking to you. Nice. Um, yes. We were just talking about how much this conference has grown. How many data clouds have you been to? Uh, yeah, several. Uh, the last years in Enlighten, uh, the, well, three or four, uh, mm -hmm. but before that as well, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and this one is a real nice one. It's uh, very, uh, very busy. Uh, everybody's here basically, so mm. very nice. It's definitely growing. It's four and a half thousand people. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So it certainly has grown a lot <laughs> in the wow. last 20 wow. years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but what's also grown a lot is our market. So the mm -hmm. data center space has grown tremendously, especially in the last six months. Yeah. What's your take of the industry just from January to June this year? Well, it's an interesting time we are living in. Um, there is a new, there's a new wave of AI, uh, and, but the, 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 the ongoing waves with digitalization, the cloud, is still going on as well. And there's also still a very thriving retail market, uh, enterprises uh, going to data centers. And then there is the whole geopolitical uh, environment where there is more focus on security, data sovereignty in Europe, uh, the need for Europe to develop uh, an industry, a uh, digital industry more than they have today. Uh, so it's, it's, it's interesting times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What, you, what you touched on just now, it's, it's quite interesting because it comes down to data sovereignty, digital sovereignty. Mm -hmm. I mean, AI sovereignty, that has become a big topic, mm -hmm. um, both in Europe and outside of Europe. How, how do you plan, how do you build around this? Because data doesn't stop at the border, but some data will have to stay within borders. Um, how do you build a data center business in a sovereignty focused world or nationalist world? Well, it, it fits very well the model of Enlighten because we are building uh, regional data centers uh, across Europe. Uh, so we strive to be within one and a half hour drive of our customers. Mm. And that means that we have uh, data centers in country. Uh, we are not the ones that uh, design the software. That is what our customers do. But we can give them a physical presence in, in a country or actually 10 physical presences in, across Germany where you can, if, if, you, if you make the software work in that way, then you can keep the data in a country or even in a, in a region. Mm -hmm. yeah? And I think that is something that, uh, or at least within Europe, yeah? um, uh, it's depending on the requirements of, uh, of the user, the customer, of mm -hmm. course, but that is, that is what we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is what we are actually doing. And especially in AI, the, the AI inference uh, opportunity uh, will, will scale up, I believe, what we call the edge. Uh, mm -hmm. That is what we believe. But that is, uh, so for us it's an interesting development, the data sovereignty uh, uh, development. 100%. How do you view the, the, the power problem? Because everyone of course talks about power, there's some, some cities in Europe have moratoriums because there's no, not enough energy yep. uh, to power this industry. How do you think that's going to change the landscape, the, the monopoly, um, geographical monopoly of data centers on the continent? Well, it's going to, it's, it's, a, it's a real problem. Uh, it's a real problem. Uh, there are some areas where you still have power, but uh, in the, the most, uh, most places where currently the data center industry is concentrated, it's, it's a real problem. There is no power, for instance, in Amsterdam. There is no power in Dublin. The power in Paris and Frankfurt is very limited. Maybe London is the only place where you still can get power uh, in some uh, locations. So it will, it will drive, it will, it will expand the data center industry uh, broader over the continent. Because you have to, there is no other way. Um, and I, that's one element. Uh, so it will, it, will, it will normalize the industry away, I believe, from these uh, center cities, uh, what they are today. Because there is still power uh, if you go outside of the, the large uh, metros. Um, then the other thing is that, uh, and that also has to do with sustainability, I believe that the data, data center industry will need to look after themselves more and more at least more than they do today. So we will need to invest in uh, private wire renewables coming into the data center. Uh, we will need to invest maybe uh, in, in, in uh, uh, generating power ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you see these initiatives uh, coming up. Um, uh, and I don't mean nuclear also plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's really big, <laughs> but, but uh, maybe yes, maybe yes. But I'm, I'm more thinking about uh, generation uh, uh, at the location or mm -hmm. close to the location. So we, we need to look into that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but it's both, yeah? mm -hmm. we need to spread out and, and we need to look at how can we improve our supply ourselves? What can we do ourselves? Mm -hmm. Would you like more countries, more governments to recognize this sector as an electricity intensive industry? Yeah. Um, so therefore giving yeah. you cheaper power, reducing maybe some yeah. carbon taxes? Yeah, well, that would be great, but yeah. it would al already be great if, if uh, there is this, for instance, this uh, review of the queuing in the UK, mm. 
uh, where the problem in the UK is that there are a lot of uh, power generation uh, uh, initiatives that have taken a lot of power reservations and a lot of these, uh, and it's, it's, it's the first, first come first serve in the UK. And if you change that, if you would review those queuing, uh, the, the queue, that would help us a lot because then the, 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 the projects that are not happening are only happening in five years. And if the data center industry would be recognized as an important industry, for instance, to, to fuel the AI in the UK, that will help. And that's just an example. Uh, there are some countries who are doing this already. Germany is already in the, hey, you, when you look at the, what the government says about uh, what, what, what they want with Germany, that's already happening. Yeah? And it would be great if we then also can do something about taxes, but, but it would already be fantastic if the availability of power uh, would be easier. But some, some of the people that we speak to, they are kind of fearful that they could be the first step into this industry becoming a an utility, uh, which a lot of people think is a synonym of, um, of more regulation. Yeah. Do you think that would be a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's an unavoidable thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. whether, you, whether you... It has pros and cons. Um, it has pros and cons. Uh, uh, sure, a regulation is never great because you need to then comply to many more uh, yeah. arrangements. But at the other side, this industry is a mainstream industry and it's core for the future. So I think it's unavoidable. Yeah, and we need to. I think we need to be uh, adaptive to, to to those needs as long as we get something in return. So I would be okay if we get more regulation, if we then also get uh, a stronger position in getting power. And, um, and so I think it's unavoidable, and I think we should we should be aware of the how important this industry is for 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 the society. And it has become uh, when I started in this industry 25 years ago, it was a niche industry. It was business to business. It was uh, networks, uh, internet service providers. Now it's a mainstream industry, uh, and everything which you do. Well, I don't have it. I Your gave phone, my yeah. phone to uh, Mariska, <laughs> but um, everything which you do on the on this phone nowadays gets into a data center so it's core to everything we do mm. and that with that it's unavoidable that you get more regulation mm. yeah uh -huh. we just try to treat we have these uh, data center associations we should try to these data center associations should try to help the regulator do the right thing mm. but we will get more regulation mm. yeah. 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 It, it is definitely coming anyway at some point it's coming anyway five to ten yeah. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why these associations are so important mm. that we have we have the european association uh, where we try to get uh, sustainability uh, in, in a way that, that really helps, that is the right thing. And, um, and, and that's very important, that we get the regulations in a way that it, that it actually helps and yeah. creates more sustainability in our data center industry. Okay. And of course also the, the national uh, associations. Mm -hmm. okay. Before we get into Enlighten, one mm -hmm. final question around M&A IPOs. I mean, we've gone through a huge, tremendous M&A wave in Europe yeah. um, in the last five, ten years. Things have quite down a little bit in Europe at the moment, or it's more about one or two assets as opposed to full businesses. When do you think the next big M&A is coming? It's happening um, already. You think it's already started? Yeah, it's already started, right. yeah. It's happening again, and um, uh, I think everybody's now a little bit, when you look at what Microsoft did, for instance, uh, the, the two gigawatt that they withdrew from the, from the market, from their demand, I think it's, it's partly geopolitical, uh, uh, what's happening in the world. But it's also, um, I think, it's also the AI. What, what's going to so if you, if you're building a hyperscale data center today and you do that on the basis of 10 kilowatts uh, per rack, uh, air cooled, um, we don't know whether that type of business is still required in five or ten years time. Mm -hmm. In the current spec, it could be that most of that will will convert into a demand for 130 kilowatt uh, uh, liquid cooled racks, mm -hmm. and that is a very different uh, infrastructure. That is that is a um, that has an effect of roughly 60 percent of the capex will need to be reinvested to to convert from that 10 kilowatts to uh, 130 mm -hmm. kilowatts, and I, I think that's that's a certain uncertainty in the market at this mm -hmm. moment that also have dri driven the the M&A activity a little bit down. Um, but, but everybody sees that it's coming, that it's, uh, maybe it's the end of 26, maybe it's 27, maybe it's 28. But we need to get ready for that. And uh, uh, that, will, that, will, that on itself will, will drive M&A again. And I'm, I see, see that happening again. We have this moment the most busy M&A uh, pipeline ever, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be ex exit season very soon, I guess. Yes. <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. Um, what about IPOs? Do you think there's going to become another stronger way of raising capital in this space, especially for European companies? 
uh, not on the short term. Yeah. And the reason for that is that the, the, the valuations are so so high in the private uh, sphere that there is not a lot of there is not a strong incentive it's, to go IPO. Yeah. There is enough capital. Uh, there is enough capital uh, at at relatively high valuations yeah. in a, in. A, in the in the non-market, uh, the outside, uh, the private uh, mm. private transactions. So as long as that is the case, mm. uh, I do believe that ultimately uh, uh, mm. this market is scaling up. Mm. That ultimately we will get into IPOs yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it might be a couple of years away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And talking about enlightened, so you're backed by One Square Capital. Yeah. Uh, I Square Capital, so not One Square. I Square Capital. You've got data centers, or you're building data centers in the UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, yeah. um, France, Belgium, Netherlands. We all over Europe and Spain. Sorry, yeah. forgot Spain, forgot Iberia. Um, I hope the power outage <laughs> didn't yeah. affect anything down there. No, um, we were we, we, we lived through that. Yeah, the generators yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, hold. We were very proud of that. Everything was fine. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear any single data center, yours or any competitor, that has actually gone down. So it's a good thing. That's a good uh, for thing. The day. Yeah. Um, but give us an update on what you already have built and expansion plans at the existing sites, and then we'll talk about future expansions. But what's the current development pipeline? Um, well, the, the current focus is to, so we've done a, a first wave of uh, uh, acquisitions and investments. We are investing in these sites. We're bringing all the sites that we have acquired. We've acquired 34 sites. Uh, we're bringing all these sites up to standards of today. Uh, we almost, we're not fully finished with that, but we will finish by that with that quarter three, quarter four this year. And, uh, and we are now getting ready for the, for the next uh, wave. Um, we will the prime focus will be on doubling down. Uh, there's a lot of demand in the existing markets that we are, the seven markets uh, that we are currently in. So the focus will be strongly on doubling down, but we will also start uh, going outside. Yeah, we will start yeah. going outside, maybe add uh, three or four yeah. countries uh, to it. And, okay. and we have a plan to, to grow another uh, uh, 20 to 30 sites if we can find the right uh, targets mm -hmm. in the next uh, two to three years. Yeah. Yeah. So you're mostly going to do it in organically, so buying assets? Buying, buying assets, assets yeah. and we will start doing some organic. Okay. So what we will do is, uh, but what our first organic expansion will be existing sites and then expand. That is the, okay. that is the, the first step that we will take. Uh, we do not have uh, uh, plans yet to go greenfield, as we mm -hmm. call it. Um, we will ultimately do that as well, yeah. but not, not today. Not yeah. Now, yeah. If you look into a five, seven year pipeline, how many megawatts or how, many, how much money are you looking at deploying? Uh, well, we, we, we want to get to uh, our ultimate ambition mm. is uh, 100 sites with an average of uh, three to five megawatts. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's depending on the market demands, it might go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at this moment we're looking at three to five, yeah. it might be five to eight, uh, but that is, that is our ultimate uh, ambition. And that is towards, let's say, 28, 29. Yeah. Uh, but it depends a little bit on how fast the industry develops. So yeah. AI is a, is, a, is a question mark. Mm. Uh, it's absolutely there. We've done the first, let's say, 10 contracts uh, with, uh, with uh, AI installations for customers all across the spectrum. Uh, so typical AI companies, but also governments and universities that are wanting an installation. Uh, we believe that will uh, keep on going. We don't bank on this. It's not, it's not the basis of our business. The yeah. basis of our business is the enterprise uh, with channel uh, business. Mm -hmm. uh, the second layer is the platform companies, uh, including the hyperscalers, but we're actually focusing uh, slightly more on the, on the, the layer below uh, the hyperscalers. And then the third layer, the third segment is the AI. We're not banking on the AI, but we are definitely uh, wanting to engage and, and invest. Yeah. And let's see how fast that goes. If that goes very fast, then we will go faster. If that uh, takes a couple of years, my personal opinion is that it will be that the development will be similar to what happened in the cloud back in 2014-15. So I, I believe in AI we are like cloud in 2014-2015. Uh, cloud took three years to really get get going, and it took five to eight years to, to really become a mainstream uh, thing. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I, I think it will go like that. So yeah. I think by 2030, it will be very strong. Yeah. Uh, but it's 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 going to grow over the next yeah. uh, five years. Yeah, and I guess as long as the power is there, it's and the power needs to be there. Yeah, the, the power, power needs to be there. Um, yeah. Okay, Harry, I'm not going to take much more of your time. One word it's a to pleasure. describe. Yeah. One more question. One word to describe 2025. Exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's exciting. Yeah. That's the main word. It's uh, we don't know everything. Yeah. 
uh, we know a lot, but we don't know everything, and it's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the unknown is very exciting, and the opportunity, the un unknown opportunity. opportunities as well are very Absolutely, exciting. Yeah. Um, Harry Vasquez, CEO and co-founder of uh, Enlighten. Thanks so much for talking to me. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, as for your home, thank you for watching. And do check our website and social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At the Tech Capital, your leads, we report. Bye for now.